What Astro did, I think, was really smart because they started with content sites, which were pretty underserved because, you know, stuff like Next and Remix are, are pretty decidedly for apps. If you build a content website with Next, you're throwing a lot of machine at a problem you don't have. For static content, it just doesn't really make sense to ship a, a Next or a Remix site because it's just a, it's a lot of dynamic stuff. And if you're not doing dynamic things, it's, I don't know, it's kind of like bringing a bazooka to a pie fight, you know? <laughs> doesn't make a lot of sense. What Astro did was they were like, okay, well, this market's not being served right now because there are static site generators like, you know, Gatsby, which it this point appears to be abandoned, which is kind of a tragedy. There's Hugo, there's Jekyll, there are a bunch of, of other static site generators. If you choose a Hugo or an 11 D or, or something like that, you hit this wall if you have a need for anything dynamic. And I think what Astro saw was a really high potential thing is that so many websites are almost entirely static content, but there's a little bit that's not. There's a newsletter opt-in, there's a, a like button, there's a, you know, a something dynamic that happens. And that bit, if you're doing it in one of the other like traditional static site generators, puts you in this boat of like, you're on your own. You got to roll it yourself. You're you're completely in charge of managing all of your client site interaction because those static site generators have a clear stance that like, that's not what they do. And that's what makes them powerful is that they have a very clear scope and they stick to it. And I love that for those types of sites. But as we get into like more modern marketing sites and stuff, you just, you, you're almost never going to hit that point of like, I need no dynamic anything. So Astro was very smart. They did content first because it was an underserved market and they did opt in dynamic stuff. You can opt in to client side JS by building with React or Svelte or whatever, and then saying, you know, run this on the client. And it was such a smart move for them. Then once they established that that was a really good pattern, they just took it one step further and they said, also, you can opt in a page to be dynamic. So you don't have to server side render your entire site. You don't have to server side render even your entire like sub path. You can choose one page and say, this page is dynamic and server-side render that. And that's their hybrid mode that they shipped. Now, they do have an option if you want. You can server-side render the whole site. You can set it to server mode, at which point it will be fully server-rendered. Everything on the site is dynamic, which means you can build just about anything that you would build with a Next.js or a, a Remix in Astro because it's got all the same server-side capabilities and you can still bring in your favorite framework, your React, your Svelte, your, your view, web components, I think, at this point, like anything. You want to bring it in, you got it. And that's a really, really powerful workflow. But what I love about it is that it sort of inverts the the paradigm that I've seen in a lot of frameworks where what a lot of the frameworks are saying, like with a, if you ship next, next is saying it is worth the downsides of shipping all of this JavaScript on the client side to get the power of being able to do these dynamic things. And what Astro is saying is don't ship all that JavaScript until you hit the use case where you need it, right? It's not like, I feel like next is just in case. It's a lot of power that you probably don't need, but it's there just in case. And so people choose it as like, oh, we can grow into it, right? Maybe we'll get more complicated as we go. Whereas Astro is just in time. And that to me is sort of the heart of good design because it's saying you don't use any of this stuff until it's time to use it, at which point you flip this switch and we'll turn it on for you. By default, you ship nothing but HTML and CSS. There's no client side JavaScript. You have a, a newsletter interaction. Great. Flip on the client side JS for that little newsletter component and it's dynamic and everything else is still static, right? No, no client side JS for that. Then maybe you got a page. You want people to be able to log into your site. Okay. Now you got a dashboard. Well, that dashboard can be set to be server side, but your marketing site is still static because it's mostly static content, right? You just got a couple opt-in components and that allows you to grow into these very complex, very full featured web experiences that aren't carrying a lot of extra page weight just in case. They're not carrying extra page weight on your blog because you need it on your dashboard. And it lets us solve this, this problem that previously you could only solve, as far as I'm aware, through like micro front ends or by by stitching things together with proxies or, or whatever. And you'd have like your marketing site built in 11D and your backend built in uh, a React framework. That isn't, it's fine, but it's not ideal. Like you've got multiple code bases. You're, you're sort of, you got to keep a lot of context in your head to work on a project like that. If everything's in Astro and you just sort of progressively opt into the complexity that you need for the, the given page you're working on, the baseline stays the same. Everything is built in Astro. Everything is is being, is sharing a design system, is is sharing the, you know, whatever tokens you want to use if you're using Tailwind or CSS variables or whatever. All that's baked into the same site. And then individual portions of it can mount a 
an entire React app and you can go full like, you know, client side SPA React app for say your dashboard. And I've done that in Astro. It's actually kind of a nice pattern. It works really well because it's all behind a login and none of it needs to be SEO friendly. And, you know, the, the site wasn't going to work without JavaScript in the first place because of a couple components that were that were built there. So, you know, it, we could pretend that we were going to ship a, a non-broken experience by using SSR. But the fact of the matter is it's broken if JavaScript is off, right? And, and it doesn't matter if you're using an SSR framework, if it's still broken, if JavaScript is off. So all that to say, you kind of have these options. You can go full server-side rendered, dynamic, everything. You can go server-side rendered, but no JavaScript on the client side, which is pretty dang cool. You can go server rendered and client side JavaScript for a very full featured, like rehydrated experience. Or, you know, for most of the pages on your site that aren't going to have any interaction, you just ship static HTML and CSS. That is why I think Astro is holding its place in my heart as the right default choice for a lot of what's being built for the web these days and why I think it, it has an opportunity to be a real contender for dominance on the web. Like I think that Next and Remix and those types of like heavy app frameworks are really good for apps, right? And I do think there's probably a point of complexity where you're like, you should just reach for like, you know, you're building an ultra complex app. Just use the ultra complex app framework. But most of the time we're not doing that. Most of us aren't building Facebook. Most of us are building like something that's got a log in to, you know, pay for something. And that's fine. That's actually idea. That's good. That's what our jobs are is to help people accomplish the things they want to accomplish. And most of our companies aren't selling social networks. They're selling a product. They're selling a service. And that complexity just doesn't merit a lot of what these big heavy frameworks bring in. So to me, that's why I think Astro is the right default choice. And it tends to be what I reach for first in a, a lot of projects these days, almost all of my projects these days.